Smartboard Revolution presents What's New in Notebook 14. This episode is about the 3D tools, and I'm your host, Matt Granger. You can see in the bottom right hand corner here, this is the May 2014 edition. As Notebook 14, 15, as they add new functions, things may change, so always check for the latest version of a video. How can we use some 3D content from the Smart Exchange? When you install Notebook, there is no 3D content by default. When you go into the Gallery tab, one of the options here is the Trimble 3D Warehouse, and we'll go into that in a few minutes. But let's first start with here the second one. Click here to browse 3D content on the Smart Exchange. So that will simply do a search in the Smart Exchange, and it looked for anything that's tagged 3D content. Now you can obviously go through here and do another search and be more specific. This is just a general search. So here you could add keywords to search for something in specific. There's a lot for science, some math with your 3D objects. Say we want this heart. You click download, but before you can download, you have to be signed in. I'll download this, so you click on download. I was asking if I want to save this gallery item or open it. I'll go ahead and open it, so it will open in Smart Notebook. In Notebook 11, you have to either purchase a license for the 3D tools or have a Smart 3D document camera. It's that simple. It opens up in Notebook. Now we're going to take a look how to use this later. If this was something that I wanted to keep, I could save this file. So I'm saving the notebook file, not just the picture, but the notebook file, maybe 3D heart. And I would save it wherever I save my files. And now whenever I need this file, I can open up this 3D heart page, and there it is. Or I could come into my content, and I've already created a folder, new folder, and I've created one already called 3D Content, and I could just click on the file, drag it here, and then drop it into my 3D Content. That's another way to save it. Then I'm not necessarily saving this page, but I have it here in my content, and you may even do it both ways. Onto any file, you can just come into my content, 3D content. A good rule of thumb is that any time you put something into my content, find it, and go to the properties, and rename it. Because a lot of times, if you're just dragging an item off of a notebook page, it could have a ridiculous name with a bunch of numbers, and you'll never find it again. So go in and find it and change the title. That's how you find 3D content from a Smart Exchange. And you come down here, we've got eight pages, and then 9, 10, 11, 12, and they just kind of keep going here. 14 is at the end. It looks like 14 is the end. Look for things that apply to you. Save them either into a notebook file and save the file or put them into my content. The other way to get 3D content is to go to the Trimble 3D Warehouse. It used to be called the Google 3D Warehouse. Now these are files that people have made with Google SketchUp. So the quality, you know, there, it's going to be a wide range of quality. You can do a search. You have a wider variety here, so you can search for a lot of different things. How about the Globe Theater? Lots of different ones here to choose from. You're going to get a wide variety of quality, so you may have to, you know, try a couple of different things. This one looks like it has some good detail again. Let's try this one. So I'm going to click this download button, and I have two choices here. I can't use this one. I have to download this one, the Google Earth KMZ file. And we're going to have to do a little playing around here to get this to work because Smart Notebook only uses what's called the Collada file, but a lot of these are not saved. It's very hard to find the Collada file in here anymore, but there is a workaround. So we're going to download the Google Earth KMZ, 
and I'm gonna save it this time. I don't want to open it because that's gonna open in Google Earth. I don't want that. So I'm gonna save it. Now this is in Windows 7. This is what we have to do. We've downloaded that file. Now we're gonna open up that download folder and we have to change something because by default in our downloads folder, in all the folders, we can't see the file extension, the .mp4, .pdf. We normally can't see that. I've already changed this one. But we need to be able to see it because we need to change that KMZ file. So to do that, I've got my folder open here, and here is the original globetheater.kmz. This is the file, but normally you wouldn't see the .kmz at the end. So to get that, we have to go here to the Organize in the top left, and then select the Folder and Search Options, and then go to the View tab, and then we're going to scroll down here, Right below this hidden files and folders, we're going to come down right here to this one. Hide extensions for unknown file types. And yours is probably already checked, so we're going to uncheck that. So now it will show the extensions. So I'm going to click OK, and now in yours you will see the extensions show up. I'm going to come down here, and I can right click on this file, and I'm going to rename it click at the end and I'm going to delete the KMZ but I'm going to leave the period and I'm going to put ZIP and it will ask are you sure you want to do this may become unusable but yes we're sure so we'll click yes so now we have a new icon a folder with a zipper on it so we double click to open that and then in the top left extract all files button we'll extract that by default, it's going to extract into the same place. So here it's in the Downloads folder called the Original Globe Theater. That's fine. I'm just going to click Extract, and it's done, and here it is. Now notice, see it's different here. It doesn't say Extract All. It looks the same. It has the same files in it. It just doesn't say Extract All. This is the folder that has been extracted. And here, if you can see, this is the, the zip file. Same files here, but it has the extract all. So I can go ahead and close that. I can open up Notebook. I can either open this folder. I have to open the Models folder. And then drag the .dae file. Notice I get the plus sign, and I can drop that now into notebook and there is the 3d file that's one way of doing it the other way would be in notebook go to insert 3d object it was in my downloads folder original globe theater models and untitled da same thing so how do we use the 3d content once we have it we have the heart here so notice when you click on it, you still have your drop-down menu. You still have your resize handle. If it's a little bit too big, resize it. But notice you also have some other options. These are your rotating. You don't have the regular rotation handle because this is a 3D rotation. So this one here allows you to rotate keeping the same top view and just rotate it 360 degrees. Here at the bottom allows you to rotate it around the center axis. So you click that and now we can rotate it and look at it in that orientation. I'm kind of going in a circle with my mouse to make it go in a circle. On the left this is to rotate it around the center axis, the center horizontal axis, and then finally the last rotation handle is here in the middle and that lets you rotate it freely around all of the axes at the same time. Our drop down menu, since this is a 3D object, has some different choices, so reset rotation puts it back to the way it started. If they are animated, you can pause the animation, restart the animation. Not all of them are, but some of the ones from the Smart Exchange are. Disguise 
if for some reason you don't want it showing when you come onto the page this is just kind of a built-in so it's disguised and then click the little hat in the bottom corner and there it is back to the heart and then you can disguise it again and sometimes if this is on the screen while you're trying to talk kids may be distracted so doing that can take their attention off of the beating heart while you're discussing something but there's one other thing that you can do and that is to right click on part of the image and normally that's going to bring up the exact same drop down menu but when you select a specific part like I selected the vein I have a new one here called add label and when I click that notice that it put a point here where I right clicked on it and now I can double click here on the word label type in what it is click off I can right click on another one here call this one artery I can drag the labels wherever I want but now the cool part is when I rotate the heart those labels stay connected to the spots so you can have students label these parts you can label them some even come with labels already attached and then to get rid of a label you simply click on it and click the X if that's what you can do with the 3d content but here's the globe theater and even the ones here from the 3d warehouse you can add your labels you can also take text drag it on there and then you have written text so you can do it with typing or you can use the written text These 3D objects really can help students see something. If you don't actually have the physical object, it really helps them visualize in a way that a 2D picture will not finding. In Notebook 2014 now, everybody who has Notebook 2014 has a license for these 3D tools. So finding that content either in the Smart Exchange or the Trimble 3D Warehouse that goes along with some of your content can really be helpful for students. And it's a good activity giving them the object and giving them a list of words that they need to label. So give it a try and I think you'll find it very interesting. Join us for more on the Smartboard Revolution G Plus community and you ask your questions. We've got a lot of people that will be able to answer them, help you find things, collaborate on different things. Hope to see you there.